I love the fall season and uh, everything about it. The temperatures, the colors, pumpkins, all that stuff is wonderful. But most of all, I really like the football. I, I love the, the Friday night lights at the high schools. I love the college playing on the weekends and, and the professionals are playing on Sundays. All of it is wonderful and I, I really enjoy football and, and follow. But one thing I've noticed about football is no matter who your team is, at some point, their team's not going to be doing so great. And they get into a rut or a habit of this losing environment. And it's not just a little tweak here or a little tweak there that'll fix things. As a matter of fact, they have to change the whole culture of the team in order to experience winning again. And I know I'm old enough now that I've seen my teams in high times and I've seen them in low times where coaches have had to come in and it wasn't just a couple of quick fixes. It was some major overhauls of, the, of everything the team stood for to be able to be successful again. When I was reading in Matthew 5, Jesus is giving his Sermon on the Mount and I sort of imagine that that was what was happening here. Jesus was having a culture change moment. You know, I was a part of a football team that went through a culture change when I was playing growing up, and I remember the first meeting when the coach called all the parents and all the players together and sort of laid out the way things were going to be in his regime. And Jesus did the same thing there in Matthew 5. I want you to think about some of the things he said. One of the things Jesus said was, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. You know, when he was saying this, he, he was saying, you know, so many times before in our world, people relied on themselves. They were self-made, and that was looked up to, but not anymore. You can't do it yourself. There's not a set of rules you can follow. You've got to realize that you're going to have to rely on somebody else. This somebody else happened to be him, and that was coming as he was living out his ministry and that he would die a criminal's death on the cross and be raised three days later. He said the kingdom of God is theirs. He also said, look, culture is going to have to change. So many times people would not mourn because that was a sign, of, a sign of weakness. And he said, no, blessed are those who mourn because they will be comforted. They said, blessed are the meek. And in, in their times, meekness was considered a weakness, but meekness is not a weakness in God's kingdom. In the culture that he was changing, meekness is not weakness. As a matter of fact, it is one of the greatest character traits. It's power under control. Think about a dam that is backed up and that water is used for power. It's used properly. It's a lot of power, all that water backed up, but it's under control. Just like a horse that's bridled. It's a lot of power, but it's under control. But Jesus went on to say some other things. He said, look, in culture, everybody knows it's wrong to murder, but I'm going to go a step forward. In my culture, in my kingdom, even if you think it, it's a sin. Same thing goes with lust. Yes, everybody knows not to commit adultery, but if you think lustful thoughts in your mind, you've committed adultery. Jesus came to change culture because it wasn't just a little tweak here and a little tweak there that was going to fix the problem. No, it had to be a rebirth. It had to be being reborn. There was a British uh, theologian that many, many years ago, and it's been quoted many times, said this, Jesus didn't come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people alive. And that's what he came for. So I want to challenge you to do something this week. I want you to read all the Sermon on the Mount. It starts there in chapter 5 of Matthew. And I want you to see some attitudes that you might not be practicing all the time. You know, we could look around at our culture here in Bloomfield and, um, or even in the world, and we're going to see plenty of things that we don't like. But I'll tell you this, when we started adopting what Jesus told us to do, which we're supposed to do if we're born again, and we start acting those out in our families and our communities, things change because cultural change. And when culture changes, big changes happen. So read through the Sermon on the Mount. Find some things you're struggling with. Pray about that and say, God, will you please help me act more like you? We'll see what happens because I guarantee culture will change.